Good morning and welcome to a short service of morning prayer on this 13th Sunday after Trinity. My name is Carol Reynolds and I have liturgical and pastoral responsibility for St. Mary's Church, Brownstone. If you would like to follow the service, you will find it on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us. Pardon and deliver us from all your sin, our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle this morning is the Venite. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness, where your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long, loathed that generation and said, It is a people who err in their hearts, for they do not know my ways. Of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Chapter 12, beginning at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood 
and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The, Lord, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is number 149. Alleluia. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord has pleasure in his people and adorns their poor with salvation. Let the faithful be joyful in glory. Let them rejoice in their ranks. With the praises of God in their mouths and the two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment decreed. Such honour have all his faithful servants. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at the 15th verse. If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, then take one or two along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of the two or three witnesses. But if the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses even then to, the, to listen to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. For truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, Truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For whereas two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among you. This is the word of the Lord. Our second canticle this morning is the Te Deum. We'll say the first part. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. 
the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And our collect this morning for this 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you through him who has lifted up the cross and reigns with you the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all souls of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that your Holy Spirit may so guide and govern us that in all the cares and occupations of our daily life, we may never forget your presence, but may remember that we are always walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. As we listen to the words of Jesus in his challenging gospel reading about settling our differences and mending fences, our minds may wander to relationships that have gone wrong and turned sour in our own circle of acquaintances. All of us are vulnerable, the strong as well as the weak. Maybe we are feeling the hurt and pain of a close friendship in tatters due to angry words or a betrayal. While we are left nursing our grievances, we forget what made us friends in the first place and precious memories of happier days are replaced by bitter thoughts of what caused the breakup. The sad reality in life is that most of our quarrels and conflicts are not with business institutions or church, but with people with whom we come in contact on a regular basis. While a stranger can bruise us, a friend can break us. Relationships are never free from disagreements, but sadly, some of us need to go no further than our own immediate family to experience the havoc created by rows over the contents of a parent's will, a strip of land, or a boundary fence. Sometimes, for good measure, children are drawn into the equation, or failing that, innocent mutual friends as a test of their allegiance. Where there was once an atmosphere of friendship and joy, 
there is now tension, coolness, and frosty silence. All of us know people whose, li whose lives have stopped growing because they focused their energy on something that someone did to them five, 10, or even 20 years ago. Following on from an exciting time of miracles and revelations, this reading from Matthew 18 is of instruction rather than inspiration. Jesus is teaching Christian conflict resolution 1.0. Knowing our imperfections, he knows how sorely we need the ability to avoid, and when necessary, resolve life's many conflicts. While originally delivered 2,000 years ago to simple people, it rings particularly true in our litigious, politically correct and hypersensitive times. Our most natural response to conflict is to wage war on the other person. So we turn to gossip and tell the world what this other person has done. Or we attack them in a public place. Or we talk about them behind their back. Or we shun and exclude them because they disagree. That's not how Jesus would have us do it. Jesus would have us sit down face to face and reconcile. To Jesus, the issue was never as important as the relationship. Reconciliation was more important than being right. So in this 18th chapter of Matthew, Jesus outlines how Christians are supposed to reconcile. And there is no mention of gossip no mention of public attacks, and there is certainly no mention of lawsuits. Jesus lays out how these things are to be handled by a Christian community, and quite simply, his prescription is to talk about things openly, honestly, and directly, person to person. Jesus wanted people who had been hurt to talk directly to the one who had hurt them, and to lay things out in a honest fashion in hopes of having the issues worked out. Jesus doesn't say, ambush them, and neither does he say, pistols at dawn may the best man win. Instead, he says that we should speak honestly and directly with each other, not in anger, but also not hiding the hurt that has been done. He also does not suggest that one person should be a winner and one a loser. No, what he wants from direct communication is reconciliation. Jesus wants all of us to be reconciled to one another, not so that one is right and one is wrong, but that both can come together and put their differences behind them. When and if the time comes for any of us to need to resolve a conflict that cannot be overlooked, I pray that we have the faith, the courage, and the common sense to act in the humble, loving spirit of Christ. We have Christ's example. We have his instruction and his encouragement. And more than that, we have his assurance that he is with us in every conflict. His love will see us through. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, through your grace we are your people. Through your Son you have redeemed us. Let us offer our prayers for the needs of the world. Lord of your people, God of everlasting love, who provides all things, we pray for all people. 
we pray for the welfare of your church here on earth. Guide and govern it by your spirit, so that all who call themselves Christian may be led in the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in peace and in righteousness of life. Renew the life of this diocese, bless Patrick our Bishop, and all who minister in Christ's name. Fill them with your spirit that they may faithfully preach the gospel and administer your holy sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of creation, we praise you, Lord, for your creation and all you richly provide. Enable us to live in such a way that your majesty and mercy are seen by all. We hold in prayer before you those things we have done to our world which have damaged it to breaking point. Give us the humility to set greed aside and the strength of will to use wisely the resources you provide. Let us pray for Michael D., our president, all nations of the world, their leaders and the well-being of all people. Give wisdom to all those in authority and give to all peoples the desire for righteousness and peace and the will to work together in trust and to share with justice the resources of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of our relationships, we pray to you, Lord, for all families of every size and description. We pray for our parish, for all those who live and work there, and for those who visit this place. We commend to your keeping ourselves and each other, and our families, neighbours, our friends. Enable us by your spirit to live in love with one another and for you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all healing, hear us, Lord, as we pray for all those in need who may be distressed or lonely, all those who are homeless and living rough on the streets. Let us pray for those with any special need who are dealing with illness or waiting on the results of tests. Bless all those who care for them. And we especially pray for those who may be suffering as a consequence of COVID-19. Draw them to yourself that they may find comfort and strength which you alone can give. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit. Let us pray for all those who have died. We praise you, Lord God, for your faithful servants in every age and ask that we may share with them Christ's resurrection glory through his death and rising again of our salvation. Let your compassion be shown to all who have been recently bereaved. Bear their sorrows and cares. Give them comfort and peace and grant them the strength and confidence in your fatherly care. Lord, in your mercy. Be with us, Lord, in all our prayers and direct our way toward the attainment of salvation. That among the changes and chances of this mortal life, we may always be defended by your gracious help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant us to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that we may with one voice glorify our God and Father. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.